Okay, guys. So I am not there in person, but I am still going to try to get this information out. What we're going to be going over is ionic naming. And you do need to know what ionic bonds are, but we'll go more into that later. If you hear my cats, the AC, do not worry about it. Okay, let's go. Oh, shout out to um, Julian and Alexander before we start. Shout out to Julian and Alexander. Uh, what is the correct term for this? So it can be either one. I'm going to go with sneaker. I call it a sneaker, but that's just me. Next one. Uh, what do you call this? I call it a roly poly. The other choice is pill bug, potato bug, but I call it a roly poly. Maybe someone else calls it a pill bug. Next. What is the correct name for this? I call it a sofa, but maybe some people call it a couch. I call it a sofa. Next. The other one was supposed to be Coke. Well, soda. Uh, I call soda Coke, no matter what type of, no matter what type it is. If it's Dr. Pepper, I'm gonna call it Coke. Um, or some people call it pop. I don't know. Some people do. But why is it so confusing if we have different names for different things? So on this one, uh, the question is, why is it good to have a system in not doing things, but more of a, of a system in naming things? So the question was, why is it good to have a system in naming things? So when we went to the other question, the poll questions, it was asking you, what was the best name for something? It has, there was different names of it, but it was still the same item they were talking about. So that can come, that can kind of make confusion if we're trying to figure out what something is, if different people have different opinions of what's going to be named. So it's good to have a system in naming things. And ionic naming has a system. Um, I don't really like that, what I did there. Okay, so in this one, it's asking you, in this question, it's asking you which of these compounds are ionic compounds. So ionic compound is between a metal and a non-metal, if y'all remember. Uh, copper, I know copper is a metal. And this is tin, and I know tin is a metal. So I know that this is gonna be what type of bonding? It's gonna be metallic. Nitrogen, I know nitrogen is non-metal. And I know fluorine is non-metal. So both of these are going to be non-metal. So if I have a non-metal plus a non-metal, it's going to be what type of bond? And if you thought of covalent, you are right. So the other one that is left is this magnesium chloride. If I go to the periodic table, I look up table. We got magnesium chloride. Magnesium is right here. And then we got chloride over here. Uh, these are going to be non-metals. And then the other side are metals. So we have a metal with a non-metal and that is going to be an ionic bond. This is going to be my metal. And this is going to be my non-metal. And that's going to be my ionic bond. Uh, which, so the question is asking, uh, which elements are cations, which elements are anions? By elements, I mean, um, metals or non-metals. So which elements are they, are going to be cations and which elements are going to be anions. So are metals going to be cations or metals going to be anions or the other way around? 
So I know, um, one thing I do know is the number of valence electrons of my periodic table. If you don't remember how to figure out valence electrons, you got a problem. So uh, the number of valence electrons you figure out by the group number. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm gonna ask you a question. So for group one, you got one valence electron. If I have one valence electron, is it easier for me to give that one valence electron away? Or is it easier for me to try to get seven more electrons to have eight? The right answer will be, I'm going to give this electron away. I'm gonna give it away. So if I give that one away, it's gonna become a cation, meaning I became more positive. So it's gonna be positive one. The same thing is gonna to happen to group two. It's easier for me to give them away. And remember, these are electrons. So it's gonna be easier for me to give those electrons away. And if I give a negative charge, I'm gonna become more positive. This is gonna be positive three, positive four, uh, negative four. And now I have five valence electrons. Would it be easier for me to give five or get three? Well, it's gonna, for me, it's gonna be easier for me to get three. So I'm gonna become negative three, meaning I'm gaining three electrons. In six, we only need two electrons. In seven, we only need one. In eight, we need zero because we have an octet. So based on that, I know that these, uh, these metals are going to be cations. And then the non-metals are going to be uh, anions, non-metals. So that is the answer to that question. And the reason why you need to know this is because um, the reason you need to know this is because you need the charges to be able to figure out the formula for an ionic bond or an ionic compound. Okay, so first, before we start naming compounds with two elements, we gotta start at the, at the very beginning, which is naming one. So we're talking about ions, so it can either be a positive or a negative ion. First, we're gonna learn how to name positive ions, which are going to be, um, our first ones are gonna be cations and then we will name anions. So first one, um, the way to name cations is, let's say I told, I told you to name sodium. But we're only talking about cations, so the positive. So the date for sodium will be sodium ion. And that's it. Remember that this is a cation. Next, potassium. Guess what the name is? If you said potassium ion, that is right. Guess calcium. Calcium is calcium ion. Magnesium. Magnesium ion. So all you have to do to name a cation, which is positive, is just put ion at the end. And that's it. All you have to put is ion at the end. Next, so these are just the cations, which are positively charged ions, meaning they lost electrons. Next one, we're gonna name anions, which are going to be the negative ones. And these are nonmetals, so they're gonna be on this side of the periodic table. Uh, the way you guys name anions is, let's say I have oxygen, and they were like, Name me oxygen. Oxygen has a negative two charge. So I'm gonna name it oxide. So what you're gonna do if you have an anion, if you're naming anions, 
you will put IDE at the end. So guess what fluorine is? It is fluoride. Guess what chlorine is? Fluoride. Guess what bromine is? It is bromide. All I'm doing is changing the ending to IDE. And these are nonmetals, so they're going to be on this side, and we only name anion. I forgot to give you guys something. Oh, I'm going to go into this. So these are the charges. Um, that's why at the beginning I asked you which sides are going to be cations and which side is going to be anions, because you need to know the charges of an element to be able to figure out the formula. So you got to figure out, you got to know these numbers too. They, they won't give you this. They will not give you this on a periodic table. So if you have a party periodic table at home, uh, just write the numbers on top of them. And then you will know the charges. But one way I remember it is when I was in high school, I just remembered that in group 14, it was going to either be plus four or negative four. Wait, 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 technical difficulties. I don't even know what that was. Uh, plus four or negative four. That's what I knew. I'm group 14. And then I knew that at 18, it was zero. And I knew that on this side, it was going to be plus, and on this side, it was going to be negative. So I didn't memorize all of the other stuff. I just knew that it was going to be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. And then on the other side, it's going to be positive, but it was going to be plus three, plus two, plus one. So it, you kept decreasing by number. And that's the way I remember it in high school. Or I memorized it. But you do need to know these numbers. I put a chart of the oxidation numbers just in case you wanted to know. But it is kind of like the, the number of valence electrons. So if this is plus one, all these elements are going to be plus one. All of these are going to be plus two. All of these are going to be plus three. Uh, plus negative four, depending on which element they give you. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. But you do need to know these elements. I mean, not these elements, these oxidation numbers, my memory. Once you start practicing, you're going to get it. So in this question, it's asking me for the charge of aluminum. Aluminum is right here. Oh, man, what is going on? Aluminum is right here. This is aluminum. And I know that this side is going to be positive. This side is going to be negative. So if I go towards the opposite, and this is 4, it's going to be plus 3. So the charge of aluminum is plus 3. So that was the answer to that. Um, okay, we're going to be doing this. So this is how you use oxidation numbers. So, um, this is how people figure out that this is the formula for H2O. So hydrogen, which is H, has a charge of plus one. Oxygen has a charge of negative two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cross these numbers. So now if I, you know, cross the numbers over, I'm going to have H2O. I don't put the one here because the oxygen itself equals one. So I don't put the number one there. Um, and that's how you figure out the formula. Um, what it's trying to do is it's trying to give a neutral charge to the compound, meaning now we want we want to have a charge of zero. But when we cross the numbers, it automatically went to zero. 
because uh, we have hydrogen, which is a plus one charge, uh, times two, because we have two hydrogens. And then the charge of oxygen is gonna be negative two, but we only have one. So if I was to figure out uh, the equation for this, two times one, because we have two hydrogens in H2O, and hydrogen has one charge, is going to be positive two, and then minus two equals zero. So this automatically went to a charge of zero. So most of the time when you do these, you're just gonna cross the numbers over. Next, this is a different one though. Um, so it's saying that oxygen has a charge of negative two, and then it's asking you, what is the oxidation number of carbon? Carbon is in group 14. Carbon is in group 14. So carbon is going to be plus one. Carbon is going to be plus one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross four over. I'm gonna cross negative two over. I'm gonna have C2O4. The problem is I can reduce this to a lower ratio. So I can do C102. Obviously I'm not gonna put the one there because this carbon itself is one. So it's gonna be CO2. So that's why car uh, oxidation numbers are useful because you need to know them to be able to figure out the formula. And that's the same question on the other one. Um, okay. So what I was trying to ask the kids from today was, um, can you give me some rules that you can see based on this example. You can even see it. So it's uh, sodium chloride, barium bromide. Don't worry about the third one. We'll learn that later, but. This start, these two are ionic compounds. And I wanted you guys to like, give me some kind of rules to naming these two compounds based on this name, based on their name. So if you notice the first element, sodium and barium, they do not change. We leave them alone. And then the second element, notice that we changed it to IDE. That's literally all I wanted you guys to um, figure out. We'll go to the next one. Okay. Um. So this is just an intro. This is just told you what an ionic bond is you guys already know what an ionic bond is. It's a metal with a non-metal. A metal is going to be a cation and a non-metal is going to be an anion. Either way, whenever they write the formula, the first one is always going to be a metal and the second element is always gonna be a non-metal. So whenever they give it to you in a question, just know that the first one's always gonna be a metal and then the negative one. So ionic naming. So this is how you name um, ionic compounds. All, they give you three examples. So this is one, two, three. So if they gave you sodium and chlorine, you will turn it into sodium chloride. If you have potassium and bromine, you will name it potassium bromide. If you had calcium and oxygen, 
you will change it to calcium oxide. So all you have to do is keep the first element by itself and then change the second element to IDE at the end. So that's how you will name ionic compounds. But make sure that they are ionic because later on we will have covalent and you name those differently. So first example is that they gave you here is you have sulfur and lithium. So you're gonna leave lithium alone and then you're gonna name sulfur to sulfide. You're gonna change sulfur to sulfide. And that's the name for that. Next one. Okay, so calcium and chlorine. So the way I will name this one is calcium chloride. So I keep this one the same, but I gotta change this to IDE. So now it's gonna be chloride. Um, so the question that I was trying to ask was, so you have the name, it's calcium chloride. Oh. I already messed up. And I'm asking you, give me the formula, the, the formula, the formula. I don't keep saying it wrong. I keep thinking about the SpongeBob episode when uh, Plankton was, Plankton was um, Mr. Krabs as a robot. Okay, so calcium. So the same thing we're going to do with the uh, oxidation numbers. I gotta figure out the oxidation numbers. So if I got the name I got, and they're asking me, give me the formula, I gotta figure out the oxidation numbers. So the oxidation number for calcium is going to be negative, I mean, plus two. And then the oxidation number for chlorine is going to be negative one. So all I have to do is cross these over and now I got calcium chloride. And this is my formula. But the only way I can figure out the formula is by knowing my oxidation numbers. So please know your oxidation numbers. Let's go to the next one. Uh, barium phosphate, it says, give me the name of this compound. So I know that barium, we keep it the same. And then phosphate, we change it. Oh, I already messed up. We change it to phosphide. Phosphide. Change the eight to IDE. And that's it. And on the next one, I got an example of how to figure out the formula. Just in case you need more help, this tells you how to do it. Um, most of the time, just cross over the charges and it gives us a number in the bottom. But just in case um, you don't still under, don't understand it, uh, you can read it. Sometimes people understand reading by reading it a lot better. Um, so we're going to do a couple of practice. I'm going to do A, B, C. We're going to do these. We're going to start with two and then do one. So for the first one, if y'all didn't know what AG is, AG is um, silver. So AG is silver. So you do need a periodic table. Always have your periodic table handy. So it's going to be silver. And then chlorine, that's chlorine, chlorine. But I'm going to change the ending to what? If you said I, I, D, E, you're right. So it's going to be silver chloride, B. A lot of people kept asking me what that first one is. It's zinc. It's zinc. That bad boy is zinc. Is going to be zinc. Zinc what? Most of you guys know that that's oxygen, so it's going to be oxide. A lot of people are writing it like this. That's not how you write it. 
is this way oxide um and this one is going to be uh c calcium in that element br it is bromine but it's not going to be bromine it's going to be bromide it all ends with ide at the end okay now we're going to do the one we're going to do these so this is telling me write me the formula the formulae formula formulae okay let's start with a uh potassium this is the sign for potassium this is the sign for iodide i gotta figure out the charges so I'm just going to write all the charges, all the oxidation numbers. Um, sometimes they're called oxidation numbers, sometimes they're just called charges. Doesn't really matter. So for potassium, it's going to be plus one. Potassium's right here. Uh, iodine is going to be over here. So it's going to be negative one. So all you have to do is cross them and you put the charge down. So the charge from iodine would go to calcium and the charge from potassium. Did I say calcium? And the charge for iodine would go to potassium. Uh, the charge for potassium would go to iodine. So it will go like this. It will look like that. And you don't put one because one is, the element itself is one. E. Uh, magnesium, chlorine. So first write your elements and then figure out the charges. Uh, magnesium, the charge is going to be plus two. Chlorine is going to be negative one. This one's right here, magnesium's right here. Um, and then um, figure out the what you're going to do next. Next step, I was gonna say someone's name, but I don't wanna put them on the spot. Next one, um, it's going to be, you cross the charges. So MG, this one's gonna go over here. The two is gonna go over here. So it would be CL. So these, this is how you do that. Uh, last one that we're going to do. is going to be C. This is C is what does C say? C is sodium and sulfur. So it's going to be sodium N A S. My cat Felix is right here. Uh sodium is plus one. Sodium is right here. Sulfur is negative two. Second step cross the charges. Now it's going to be Na S. Oh no, Na two S. Um, don't put the one. Obviously, you can put the one, but erase it afterwards. So that is going to be the answer. But remember, you guys must know these oxidation numbers, these charges. These will not be given to you. They're not written anywhere on a periodic table. So you do need to know them. After this, um, we're going to do some homework questions. So I'm not going to leave you guys hanging without any homework help. We obviously, I'm going to help you. So uh, the first one is writing the name. Do not give me the formula. They gave you the formula. All you have to do is figure out the name. So I'm going to do three of them. You will do the six, the six left. Um, the first one, the rule number one. Rule one, keep the first element the same. And we're talking about cations. And then the second one, change second element to an ending with IDE which are going to be our anions. 
Okay, so it's going to be calcium. And if I follow the rule, it's going to be calcium chloride. Change chlorine to ID at the end. Second one. K, if you don't know what K is, K is potassium. Is right here. That is potassium. Um, it's going to be potassium. And that is fluorine. If you don't know by now, memorize it. So it is going to be fluoride. And then the last one is sodium. Sodium, we keep the first element the same, the same. and it's going to be, uh, that element's name is bromine. So it's going to be bromide. So we changed the last one to IDE. So we got calcium chloride, potassium fluoride, sodium bromide. And now we're going to do these. So these are a bit harder because it's asking you to try and figure out the charges. So that's what we're going to do. First, right. I'm going to first write symbol. Second, figure out charges. Thirdly, cross, cross charges. Okay, so lithium, lithium is right here. And if I know anything, I know that this side is positive, this side is negative. Kind of like a battery. One side is going to be positive, the other side is going to be negative. Just remember, in group 18, that's going to be negative. So if this side is going to be positive one, fluorine's over here, so it's going to be negative one. These are things that I need to memorize. So if I was to cross the charges, it will be LIF. I'm going to do this one. Magnesium bromide. So magnesium, go to the periodic table. Magnesium is right here. If that's plus one, this is going to be plus two. This is going to be plus two. Bromine is right here. So that we already know it's on the same group as fluorine. So it's going to be negative one. I'm going to cross the charges. So that is going to be MgBr2. Remember, we don't put the one, the one sort, the element itself is one. Uh, and I'm going to do so. This is for this. This is for this. So these are the answers. And then I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do this rubidium with iodide. So rubidium, if y'all didn't know, rubidium is. I can even see it, but it's in group one. So rubidium is Rb and it's positive one because it's in group one. Iodine is in the same group as fluorine. So it's gonna be negative one. So the formula for this, if we cross the charges, is gonna be RBI. And that's it. That's it for ionic naming. So um that's it, but also guys, remember to turn in your homework, your um, bonding practice, and your quiz is due today. Your bonding quiz is due today. This homework will be due Tuesday next week. Hopefully um, this video helped a little bit. If not, I also attached this other video from Khan Academy that maybe might help, but okay guys. I'll see you guys next week on Tuesday.